conference. You know, there aren't many conferences like this around the world where men get together for four days. And this guy started this meeting uh, over 20 years ago with how many guys? Uh, 17. 16, sorry. Uh, 16. We're now up to 600 consistently. So uh, let's give a warm welcome. I would share with them some practical principles to practice. Because if I had one more shot, you'd be by yourself. I wouldn't be with you. Practical principles to practice. But let's lay a little foundation. The foundation is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, where Paul says, I delivered unto you the gospel which I also preached unto you, which also you have received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scripture. The Gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then he goes on to say, he was seen of the twelve, he was seen of Peter. It's interesting to say he was seen of Peter because Peter was one of the leaders there, 
of the church, and he was seen of Peter. And he, then he said he'd seen of all the apostles. In fact, he says he's up 500. Most of them said he's still alive. If you're going to start a rumor that somebody rose from the dead, it's good to have more than one or two witnesses. So Paul broke out with 500. Well, 500 witnesses is pretty, pretty, pretty reliable source. And then he says, last of all, he was saying to me, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Dr. Ian Thomas wrote a little book, a little book here, The Saving Life of Christ. When I first saw the title a number of years ago, I wondered, Saving Life of Christ? I thought it was the death of Christ that saved us. But then I read the book. Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We're all born in sin. We were born from a sinful mother, sweet as mine was, sinful dad. Our nature is sin. You've heard the illustration. If you take a little pig and you wash this little pig, and if you scrub him up real good, spray him with your feet, put a ribbon around his neck, and take him out in the yard, and turn him loose. Where will he go? He'll go to the straightest mud hole. Because that's his nature. See, pig's skin, they don't breathe like cattle. They're, they're, it's closed skin, and so they have to have something like water you know, these pig farmers, they are sprinkling all the time. They're, in it, they're wet because it keeps them cool. And so a, a, a pig's nature is head for the mud hole. Our nature is sinfulness. And during that condition, Jesus died for us. Romans 5, 10, for if when we were in the midst, we were reconciled to God from the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we are being saved, or in the process of being saved, by his life. Now, wait a minute. We've been saved by his death, now that we're saved by his life. That's the reason we look, look at the context. We're saved from his death by the, from the, the benefit of sin by his death. We're saved from the power of sin by his life. Well, what kind of life? The life he showed us 33, 34 years while he was here? No. The life that he's living now. You see, Jesus is alive now. I talked with a buddy over in Louisville a couple years ago, and he was a pilot about flying back from, uh, from, from Paris. I told him to a lady pilot that was both what you call dead in and coming back home. And, uh, she said, you know, I'm a Christian, but I've got some Buddhist friends. I've got some Muslim friends, actually. They're better people than the Christians I know. He said, well, answer me. He said, where is Buddha tonight? Well, he's, he's dead. Where is Muhammad tonight? Well, he did. But where is Jesus tonight? She didn't answer. See, Jesus is alive right now. Jesus in John 7 says, It's necessary that I go away. For if I go not away, the Spirit will not come. But if I go away, I will send him unto you. When he has come, he will reveal to you all things and teach you all things. It's necessary that Jesus go to be with the Father so that the Spirit might come. And when He has come, you see, the Spirit of God is infinite. That means it's just on and on and on. The Spirit of God indwells every believer. He indwells you and me. He indwells all the Christian folks in China and throughout the world. Because the Spirit of God indwells us and when you are born again, you are filled with the Spirit. Because the Spirit don't come in pieces. You have 
Holy Spirit. Now there's groups that say, well, we're having a, a spirit filled meeting. We'll go down and get spirit filled. Well, I never went to one of those. See? But what a wonderful. No. I only have a spirit. And the spirit is indwelling me. Now one of these days he's going to come back again. First Peter 1, 1 5 says, Who have kept from the power of God through faith unto salvation, let it be revealed in the last time. First Peter 1 5 says, You haven't been saved yet. Well, what's he talking about? He's talking about being saved from the presence of sin. So in Dr. Thomas's book, we're saved from the penalty, from the power, from the presence, called the three P's. Keep that in mind. The navigator's work has dwelt largely in the second peak. Helping fellows and girls and men and women have victory over the power of sin. How can we do that? Well, you were challenged Friday night by Chuck. You were challenged last night by Kent <coughs> as to what was your victory. I'm going to give you a few practical principles to practice to help you get there. And one of them is quiet time. The little, little simple thing of quiet time. You see, Jesus gave it all for us. He wants us every day to start the day with Him. Mark 1, uh, 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out to a solitary place and there prayed. Mark, Psalm 5, 3. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. I was saying shortly before I went, went aboard ship. And uh, the fellows taught me to have a quiet time. But when I went aboard ship, I was Put the Seagorn tugboat out in Pearl Harbor. And it was built for 46 men. And there were 90 men aboard. And I wondered, where in the world can you have a quiet time in a situation like this? Besides that, I don't know how long I'll be in Port this tugboat. So I began to think, well, I had to watch. I had to get to 48 one morning, shortly after I got aboard. And I realized about 5, 6 o'clock, I could have a quiet time in where I want to. Because all the, all the guys were asleep. Except the guys who watched. They had the watch and the anchor watch and the cooks were, were busy. And, and the boiler was down, down below. So I, I made a habit of getting into my rack about 9 o'clock. I was tired anyway. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you wake me up. And I'd wake up about 5.30. That's 9. See, that's eight and a half hours. That's about the big time. Too. So I'd get up and ease out of my rack, go up to the washroom, get squared away, and uh, <coughs> come back, put my stuff away, go over to mess all it, get a cup of coffee, and uh, by 6 o'clock, I was up on the boat deck reading my Bible. Fella, the Lord gave me a fellow. He comes to Christ. He's 19 years old. I saw him. I said, Jack, now, you want to you learn how to get up early. And the way you learn how to get up early is just to rack early. And so I taught him, Lord, the whole week had man-to-man time and quiet time. For, for a couple of years, I brought him on the boat deck. Uh, so followers, you see. Uh, one morning, one guy come up and, and he, I don't know if he's maybe he had to watch him. He said, what are you doing, bro? I said, I'm reading my Bible. He said, really? I said, yeah. He said, I thought you told me you already read that book. <laughs>
develop somebody that will show you how to do it and make it simple and make it a practice all of your life. It's a practical principle to practice. By the way, I have notes here and I have a, I have a torch. See a jet torch? Now I know you call it a flashlight, but it's not flashlight. <laughs> Bible reading. Revelation 1 3. Let it read it, read it, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Blessed is he that readeth. Seven, one, and three. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Find a point of thing is to write them from the table of thy heart. You know, Deuteronomy 6 is a good chapter. 
Put on the six and lay this word on your heart, the six six, and you shall teach them your children. Speaking of them when I sit in thine house, when I walk with by the way, when the lies down, and I rise with us. And have the word on your heart so you can teach it to your children. Have the word on your heart so you can share your faith. Uh, share your faith with the practical principles of practice. Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was cold. Helen and I had gone to church. We came by a shepherd mall for a walk. <coughs> and we were doing our walk. An old fellow in there, Clarence, he, uh, he looked at us. He was a friendly old man. And he said, you, you folks aren't training for a race, are you? <laughs> no, no, we're not really. And so we got to talking. I, I said, we've been to church. And we thought we'd come by here for our exercise. But we picked up a sandwich and went home. I said, by the way, you can go to church today? Uh, he said, no, no, no. All right, he says, I'm a Catholic. I said, I should have told him what a Catholic to the church, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, said, I, I said, well, you know, Jesus is in the Catholic church. And so I tried to get him to talk about Jesus, but couldn't get my phone. Uh, a couple of days later, we were walking, we were warmed up, we were walking to the house, and in a beautiful house been built on our walk. And Helen and I, I sat down and rested there. And they could come by and she thought we owned that house. And so she used to start the conversation and we were just chatting back and forth. I forgot what it was now. But it reminded me of a proverb. And I said, you know, it reminds me of a proverb. And I quoted the proverb. She picked it up just like that, you know. And, and, and she wanted to know if we were, we were Christians. We knew Jesus. Uh, practical principles to practice, sharing your faith. Now you may not get very far a lot of the time, but you might be able to get a little further other times. But if you have the word on your heart, you, you have, a, have an opportunity to share and you have something to share. Proverbs 20, Proverbs 6, verse 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind him upon thy heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall meet thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamb, and the law is life, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. A lamp of light. Joshua 1, 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now Joshua 1 8, that's good preaching. That's too much. You want to be prosperous? You want to have good success? Sure, John, I don't know. You know, everybody can do that. Good. Well, Joshua, when he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How can I meditate day and night? I can't go around. I don't even review my verses when I walk in the board. I'm afraid I'll stumble. Helen reviews hers, and I hold on to my arm. I, see? Uh, but I can meditate day and night. Fellas, so I can meditate day and night because I have it on my heart. I memorize it. And I review it. You see? That's what it says. Success. I read a little book the other day on success. I'll give you the formula of success. No charge. Success is a habit. And you have to make it a habit. A habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. Now, what are the things that failures don't like to do? The things that failures don't like to do are the same things that you and I, including successful men, naturally don't like to do. So success is a habit, and success is unnatural. But you have to practice it. That's the reason that I, I practice memorizing scriptures. Bob, come up 
come up and let's have some man to man time. I, uh, you come over this right hand side. Uh, now, the way I keep up with my verses, <coughs> I started a long time ago. And uh, the fellas out in Pearl Harbor, out in Honolulu, they gave me a packet of 150 verses and said, Crawford, memorize a verse a day and review all you know every day. Well, I got okay for 75 days. But then I got bogged down because I didn't have anybody to, to help me and no encouragement. Later, I told the Doss about this, and he said, well, I would, you know, that's really, uh, quite, quite good, John, by yourself. But in these latter years, 30 or 40, I, I found out how to do it. So, so I meet with guys every week, and then I take a packet of my verses out of my back review, along with that meet, meeting with guys at lunch or what have you. So here I have Second Timothy. And I'll, 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 I'll show you as we go along. Second Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of sound mind. Second Timothy 1 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. Second Timothy 2 1 2. Now therefore, my son, be strong in the grace of the Son of Christ Jesus, and the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. But in that industry that before we get to second two, 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 two one, he says, therefore, be strong, be strong. Before you get into the two, 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 you better be strong. Be strong. And then three and four. Thou therefore endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that it may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. To fight. And if a man also strives for masters, yet he shall not crown, yet he except he strive lawfully. To seven. Consider what I say, and the Lord give you understanding in all things. The other day I talked to the man. And he, he, he ended up jumping up and I said, give me a break, I'm going to face Consider, just consider what I'm saying. I didn't ask him to buy it, I just said, consider. <laughs> Second Timothy 1 9. Uh, Second Timothy 2 9, thank you. Uh, We're not suffering trouble as an evil door, even under bond, but the word of God is not bad. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God and work with it. He does not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 2.16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase the more ungodliness. Father, that's that's the reason you shouldn't be slang words, you know? Even this kind of slang words. Just don't use them at all. For this vain babbling. And if you leave, the more involved it will be long for the suffering. Okay? That's what it's called, isn't it? That's what it's doing. 219. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth him that it is, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. How do you like that one? I, I just like that. Do you, you like that one? Yeah, uh, you see? Uh, you know, the question comes up sometimes, is this an old boy a Christian? Yeah, yeah, I think he's saved, you know, but he had the blood from the nickel. So he really died. He really died. Second Timothy 2, 22. Three also youthful lusts, the follow righteousness, faith, love, peace, the one that called in the Lord out of the pure heart. I was blessed this morning with my review of me before because I knew I was going to check out with you. Uh, it said, flee also youthful lust. Now, youthful people have lust, 
but old people have youthful love. <laughs> Lust don't, don't leave you when you get old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle in all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God fear preaching to give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who had taken captive by him at his will. Mm -hmm. Now I was thinking of that the other day, the Lord would tell me about a church split. Well, I, I think though you I know they call it the church, but and the servant of the Lord must not strive. If I'm in a place and they're, they're fussing, yeah, I, I got them. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. It says that in the Bible. That's the Bible. Uh, three, three twelve. Yea, and all that will live guarded in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 14, that's brother 14, uh, 14, uh, but continue down the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned it, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make thee wise with salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It's interesting, he, he was talking about Lois and Eunice, his mother and his grandma, you know, and that from a child he had known the Holy Scripture. It's interesting that Paul's Timothy, or was Timothy, but Paul didn't need any Christ. He, he, he learned that stuff, that was what he was a kid. Isn't that fantastic? That goes back to Deuteronomy 6.6, 6, and you should teach them your children, speaking of them, they're not saying it's not how, when they walk us by the way, and they're not down from that one. What's next, brother? Uh, 15, 16, 16, 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and the prophet for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. Four, one, two, three, four. But continue thou, uh, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the judge of quick and the dead and is clear in his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, with food, with you, to exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, heat the church, keep his having its ears, and shall turn their ears away from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Uh, but, but watch that, in all things, endure affliction to the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. Then you have seven eight. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. Look at that little word, my. He didn't say I finished the course. I finished my course. You see, Bob, there's a good chance that you and I will finish our courses before somebody else wants to do I finished my course. Nevertheless, they've laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. Not to me only, but all the more for the blood of the church. I reviewed these verses uh, this morning before I came. I still met, missed a couple of references, you see. But when I checked out with Bob, <coughs> notice another thing. Along the way, I mentioned certain things about the scripture. I didn't just quote them, you see. And if, if, if we'd been in a different situation, and the atmosphere had been different, uh, the fellow I'm meeting with, he mentions things. For instance, I've got the three or four or five verses, and the fellow have a question. 
And he jumped to another rope and that's your question. You know? And I showed him going ahead. And we never did get to our verses. We never did. We got to them next week, but we didn't get them last week. Because he had a better. It's what you call fellowshipping in the word. Fellowshipping in the word. Quoting the word. Back and forth. Now next week I'll go, I'll have Isaiah or Jeremiah or, 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 or people, places, whatever, you see, I, I take it from my back with you. Now, if I'm meeting with three or four guys during the week, uh, I take a different word, different package, you see. Memorizing the scripture and working at it feeds your soul. Feed your soul. Um, oh, they they just they they did. They're gonna put my chalk on one third. Is that right? Accountability. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Kent hit that last night. Let me labor just a little bit. Practical principles to practice is accountability. 1317 in Hebrew says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for their souls, as they that must give account and must do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Obey them that have the rule over you. Now in the olden days, the Methodist folks had bishops and elders and deacons and an organization and one person was responsible for so many, and one for so many, and so on, so on. So everybody in the assembly has somebody looking at them. Not all that different than military. You see, we have our officers and sergeants and so on. That's, what, that's not what I'm talking about. I put myself accountable, not my elder holds me accountable. I put myself accountable. I like to have three or four fellows. I had Brother War for a long time. See, I would go by Gene's office. I never told Gene, now Gene, I'm making you my elder, so I'll be accountable to you. I never told him that. I didn't have to. Uh, but I'd go by Gene's office and bounce things off of Gene. And in a very loving way, Gene would help me. And as nice as he could say it, he'd say, John, you're, you're, you're wrong. You've got to change for it. <laughs> uh, see, I, I was the one, I was the one that put elders over me. I chose these elders. Now, in my case, it's elders in name, it's not necessarily in age. Uh, uh, these are younger men, but they, they're my, I, I point them as my elders. A few years ago, we had navigator conference down in Orlando, Florida. We had a pastor preach to us powerfulness. Well, I was heartbroken to learn this year he playing ten to eight with him sex day. Out of the church, of course. He was not accountable, man. He didn't have fellows over him, watching over his soul, saying, boy, you can't do that. You see, fellas, you can feed your mind on porn. You can feed your mind on that stuff. And, 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 and you, you, you're going to fall by the wayside. Accountable. It says in the Old Testament, the times when kings went to war, uh, David sent Joab. Joab was David's general. And David was at home. Not only was he at home, he was on his couch in there. He sat down. And the scripture says he got up off his couch and come out on the patio. 
and they're down on the patio, and they're out dressing, breathing the fresh air, and lo and behold, there was a bathing beauty. Oh, a beauty of bathing. <laughs> uh, he said, boy, you know the story all too well. How uh, she committed adultery and had her husband killed, you see. Now, fellas, David got forgiveness. He's got forgiveness. In heaven, we're going to spend it with David. But in this life, he had a rough time. You know the story. How his son Absalom chased him all over and took his wives and slept with them in the side of the sun, you see. Read the verse for you. Proverb 2, 19. You might want to work on that. Proverb 2, 19. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the affairs of life. A fellow that gets off into sexual sin or other kind of sin can get forgiveness and come back, but he'll never reach where he once was. Never. According to the Bible and according to experience and according to history. Neither think they hold in the prayers of God. This accountability, I told you now that I chose, I choose several fellows, and I, I, I'm around these fellows so that they can watch over my life. Uh, you say, well, John, as old as you are, you have to have people watch over you? Yeah. Why? Pride? Greed? can come in just like, just like, uh, a couple of three years ago, uh, well, several years ago, I figured out a saving plan for my retirement. And I talked it over with Helen. And we tried it. And it worked for all those years. And Still working, by the way. And a friend of mine come by and said, John, I got, I, I, here's a tremendous deal. And there's a new company, new stock, <clears throat> and I bought into it. I don't buy individual stocks. And I, I put several, several thousand dollars into that company. I, I was able to salvage some of it. I was able to salvage 38 cents. <laughs> Not 38 cents a share, 38 cents. It's still there, I never have collected it. <laughs> and I got before the Lord. Why did I do that? The only thing I can say I did it is greed, but I don't need the money. That's right, I don't need the money. I told my wife, I said, sweetheart, greed, I'm sorry, forgive me. I told my buddy, greed, I'm sorry, forgive me. I told God, greed, I'm sorry, forgive me. Why an old man that don't need the money can change from his money-making plan into something that isn't money-making plan, it's a mystery, unless you put greed there. Now, as long, by the way, my sweetheart, when I did go do this, she said, Daddy, that is not your program. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Sweetheart? I believe it'll work this time. <laughs> <laughs> now, by the way, fellas, uh, amazing thing, because you, you need somebody. I was working on Philippians 3 8. Flipping 3 8. And besides just getting all good with Dan and Facebook, and the book and all the stuff, and the 
Some things are true. Is that true? Yeah. Honest? Well, I don't know. Just? I don't know. Lovely? That wasn't lovely. That wasn't lovely. Good report? That wasn't a good report. You see? If you're not careful, even as no man, you can commit some of these horrible things, like talking to my sweet daughter in law about a Woman's going to have a baby out of wedlock. Now, what business is that to mine? You see? But if you're not careful, you're just creeping up for this wicked. The only way I know against I confess that to my wife. I said, sweetheart, I don't know why in the world I said that. She said, well, I said, I don't remember ever doing that before. She said, I don't remember ever doing it either, but uh, you confess it to the Lord, so you won't do it again. And so, and, and so I won't. But I'm, I'm just sharing with you how you've got to have the Word, and you've got to have the Holy Spirit, and you've got to have somebody else. Accountability. Now, now cause and effect. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For what sort of man soweth, that shall he also be. He that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh be corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. We know what happened to David when it cause and effect. You and I can reap the value of cause and effect. We can get on a, a, a financial plan of consistent saving and we'll be well off in comparison if we follow that. It's cause and effect. It's cause and effect. We can get on a consistent plan of, uh, of uh, exercise and it will benefit us cause and effect cause and effect uh, I think I can use this here I haven't met many fellows here that are overweight uh, so suppose you were overweight and you wanted to lose weight uh, there's Consistent plans of losing weight, and, and, and I was 25 pounds overweight when I was 44 years old, and my doctor helped me, and I got on the plan of losing weight, and I lost the 25 pounds and kept it off for 40 years. Still off, you see. If you reap what you sow, and I'm talking to men who are PhDs and doctors and, 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 and educated people, you see, you have to believe in your soul and practice that this is absolutely true. Knowledge won't do it. You have to practice it. One more story. A couple of years ago, a fellow come by and said, John, I, I really want to know God. I really want to know Jesus. John, I really, I really, really want to help tell us it. I said, Jerry, I think I know. But he said, John, I really want to walk with you. I said, Jerry, I think I'm healthy. But John, I, I want to know him really intimately. I said, Jerry, I, I think I'm healthy. 
We need finally wound down. Let me quote to you. John 14, 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Let's go again. He that has my commandments. I said, Derek, first thing you have to do is have the word in your heart. He that has my commandments. <coughs> Next one. And keeps them. You have to obey. You have to obey. He is a love. If you obey the word and uh, keep the word, he'll love you. He'll be intimate with you. My best buddy years ago, uh, he, we'll call him Roy. You know why I like to call him Roy? That was his name. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all said, Roy, how many verses can you quote? Finally, he told me, he told us probably about 2,500, 2,500 verses. I believe mean, he could. He probably could quote more than that. But I've heard him preach it. And man, this kid, you know. He said, Roy, I wish you only knew 500 instead of 2,500. And they knew you. Well, he, he didn't care for that tightening down from God. So he left. When he left, he got out of fellowship, started stepping out on his wife, raised a son that did the same thing, you see. And you really could quote 2,500 persons of speech, you see. So you can quote your second Timothy like I did, but you have to have John 14, 21. We have to obey. And one of the best ways to obey is not all by myself, but have some fellows around me to go over my shoulder, you know, to, you know, to help me. It might not sound too good, and it doesn't fit with our culture, to be sure, somebody, you know, but it'll keep you straight all the days of your life. Let me, let me pray. Father, thank you now for this good time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs>